by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, and we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. as this church has received them? And will you, in accordance with the canons of this church, obey your bishop and other ministers who may have authority over you and your work? I am willing and ready to do so. I solemnly declare that I do believe the Holy Scriptures of the Old and New Testaments to be the Word of God and to contain all things necessary to salvation. And I do solemnly engage to conform to the doctrine, discipline, and worship of the Episcopal Church. 
we sign the declaration. Dear friends in Christ, you know the importance of this ministry and the weight of your responsibility in presenting Cody Manus for ordination to the sacred priesthood. Therefore, if any of you know any impediment or crime because of which we should not proceed, come forward now and make it known. Is it your will that Cody be ordained a priest? It is. Will you uphold him in this ministry? We will. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. of the church, 
that in faithful witness it may preach the gospel to the ends of the earth. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who do not yet believe, and for those who have lost their faith, that they may receive the light of the gospel, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the peace of the world, that a spirit of respect and forbearance may grow among nations and peoples, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those in positions of public trust, that they may serve justice and promote the dignity and freedom of every person, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For a blessing upon all human labor, and for the right use of the riches of creation, that the world may be freed from poverty, famine, and disaster, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the poor, the persecuted, and the sick, and all who suffer, for refugees, prisoners, and all who are in danger, that they may be relieved and protected, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died in the communion of your church, and for those whose faith is known to you alone, that with all the saints they may have rest in that place where there is no pain or grief, but life eternal. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Rejoicing in the fellowship of the ever-blessed Virgin Mary, and Megabu, priest and missionary, and all your saints, let us commend ourselves to one another and all our life to Christ our God. To you, O Lord our God, Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy, Lord have The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, who led your pilgrim people of old by fire and cloud, and grant that the ministers of your church, following the example of your servant, Emigabal, may lead your people with fiery zeal and gentle humility. This we ask through Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. O God of unchangeable power and eternal life, look favorably on your whole church that wonderful and sacred mystery. By the effectual working of your providence, carry out in tranquility the plan of salvation. Let the whole world see and know that things which are being cast down are being raised up, and things which have grown old are being made new and that all things are being brought to their perfection by him through whom all things were made, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, 
to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. They will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord to display his glory. The word of the Lord. As the deer longs for running streams, so I long, so I long, so I long for you. A thirst my soul for you, the God who is my life. When shall I see? When shall I see? See the face of God. As the deer longs for running streams, so I long, so I long, so I long for you. Echoes meet as deep is calling unto deep. Over my head, all your mighty waters sweeping over me. As the deer longs for running streams, so I long, so I long, so I long for you. Continually the foe delights in taunting me. Where is God? Where is your God? Where, oh, where are you? As the deer longs for running streams, so I long, so I long, so I long for you. Defend me, God, send forth your light and your truth. They will lead me to your holy mountain, to your dwelling place. As the deer longs for running streams, so I long, so I long, so I long for you. Then I shall go unto the altar of my God, praising you, O oh, my joy and gladness, I shall praise your name. As the deer longs for running streams, so I long, so I long, so I long for you. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Now, as a presbyter myself, and a witness of the sufferings of Christ, as well as one who shares in the glory to be revealed, I exhort the presbyters among you to tend the flock of God that is in your charge, exercising the oversight, not under compulsion, but willingly, as God would have you do it, not for sordid gain, but eagerly. Do not lord it over those in your charge, but be examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd appears, you will win the crown of glory that never fades away. 
the word of the Lord. Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely, from now on, all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and his descendants forever. Unka Mary Heya, Minahiki Itancha Ki Yata, Na Mitani Aki, He Wakantanka, Wanikiya Mitawaki, 
o yushki eche, ta okie kuya unki ekta, ahima toa o etaha iun, le taha we to ikaze kin owashi yawe stepi, e makia piktache, tue washake chinhe taku, he ta e tami ton unka taze kin wakate, tona. Koki papi kihena, we to e tajena, we to e taje kin, o she, we ta kila ete, ye istoki o wawashaki. Lutani, we ta tam pikin, he na taku chante mahe, wa ti, you jam pikin, e, we ta you om leta. Washa sha kapi kin, o yake e taha kun, li tu wa taye ta, kuya un pino, hena wa ka, wa pa a witaya, wo te klela pikin, hena ta kun, wash de ste o, im na ha witaye ta, wi za ta pikin, ish. Toka kala, toka ye wi tashi, ye, toa on shila, kiksu ye chin on ta o ki ye chin, Israel, he ichi ya eche, hun ka ke wi chun ya pi, o wi chi, sorry, o wi ta ki ye, ta no, ye che ta, Abraham, ye chi ta ki on, o wi han ke, Juanita, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Good morning, everyone. It is so wonderful for me to be here with all of you on such a joyful day. Uh, you all know that Cody both loves and is deeply loved by the people of Minnesota. And so I'm grateful to Cody for the invitation uh, and to Bishop Foltz for agreeing uh, for me to be the preacher today. It's great to be with you. Uh, you all know that good news seems hard to come by in these days. A global pandemic has upended all of our lives. And even as we grow wearier and wearier of physical distancing, there still seems to be no end in sight. The deep legacy of racism in which our society is built continues to be exposed in heartbreaking and infuriating ways. And that sorrow and anger is producing a justified civil unrest, the likes of which we haven't seen in many decades. Our country is deeply and bitterly divided, and every new challenge seems to just drive the wedge deeper. What a time, Cody, to promise to endeavor so to minister the word of God and the sacraments of the new covenant that the reconciling love of Christ may be known and received. What a time to make a promise like that. Against this very difficult backdrop, we heard just a few minutes ago Mary's song of unbridled joy in the face of impossible odds. My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. The word which the NRSV translates as magnifies literally means to make mega as in blasting something from a megaphone. And just a few minutes before Mary sings her song, her cousin Elizabeth, who has conceived under similarly unlikely circumstances, has also made mega in her loud exclamation when she is seized by the Holy Spirit. So here are two poor women living under a brutal military occupation in the forgotten backwaters of the empire, with, frankly, not many good prospects in front of them. 
and they are literally shouting with joy at their encounter with one another and at the embrace of the Holy Spirit. And the joy that they're experiencing comes not from the prospect of an easy life. It doesn't come from a pleasant and peaceful feeling that all is right with the world and everything is lining up just the way they had hoped. Their joy comes entirely from an absolute confidence in God's faithfulness. God has remembered his promise of mercy from one generation to another, Mary sings. God has sustained God's people through plagues and slavery, through warfare and famine. And not even the people's own shortcomings and self-sabotage can stop God's promise from finding them. So Mary and Elizabeth know that though their circumstances are far from pleasant, the same God who called Abraham and Sarah, who drove the great liberation from Egypt, who promised salvation through the prophets, is a God who can always turn the world upside down. And when they encounter a God like that, they couldn't keep themselves from shouting with joy if they tried. This morning, the very same God who called Abraham out of his quiet life as a desert nomad, the same God who gave Moses the courage to face down all the might of Pharaoh's army, the same God who called Esther for such a time as this, and who caused Elizabeth and Mary to sing with joy, is on the move again, in, with, and through this small gathering here. This gathering on what would otherwise be an ordinary Friday morning is, among other things, a clear reminder that God is not done with this church and that this church is still here for a broken and love-starved world. This is a morning that we, like Mary and Elizabeth, despite all the odds, are called to mega joy. But just like Mary and Elizabeth, our joy this morning is not some superficial feeling of happiness. It's not an anesthesia to make us forget the pain around us and inside us. The joy that we are called to this morning comes from looking at the immense brokenness of the world with wide-eyed sobriety and shouting a defiant alleluia back at it because we know in the resurrection of Jesus that God is unequivocally, unwaveringly, and unmistakably faithful. Cody, one of the most important things that I have learned in my years of ordained ministry is that in some ways the pastor's whole job is to safeguard the community's joy to guard against how we all can so easily slip back into fear and cover ourselves with the world's many, many good reasons for despair. There aren't enough people. There isn't enough money. We tried that once. No one will like it. Fear is the spiritual posture of looking at the darkness and giving up. Hope is the practice of looking at the world's darkness and remembering God's faithfulness. As a priest, your job is to call people back to hope and to safeguard their joy in the God whose promise never fails. There are a lot of things that give me hope for your future ministry, Cody but foremost among them is your deep life of prayer and your commitment to a rigorous discipline of bringing yourself and your community before the throne of God's grace in both public and private. Because if our job as priests is to safeguard hope and safeguard joy in the face of all that presses in on us, we can only do that by soaking ourselves over and over and over 
in God's presence and power and love. That's the most important thing I want to say to you this morning. What you are promising to do as a priest, in fact, what all of us promise to do as disciples, is frankly impossible. We, on our own, simply cannot do the very things we promise that we will. Our job is simply to get out of the way and to clear enough room inside ourselves for something of God's faithfulness to shine through our little broken lives. Your job as a priest, Cody, is to throw yourself on God's loving faithfulness with every moment you have breath and to help all the people who will be given into your care to do the same. Mary's song, we all know, goes on to describe God's intention to turn the world upside down, that it might be finally set right side up. Your job, Cody, your joy, will be to point to all the places our world is still upside down, Every child that cries out in hungry, every woman that is sold for sex, every black body that is brutalized and killed, every weeping mother you stand with at the grave of her child, and announce God's promise to turn it all over and make it right side up. That world-changing mega joyful vision that Mary lays out in tonight's gospel won't come to pass because you work hard. It won't come to pass because of all our clever ideas about the church. It won't come to pass because we are good preachers or attentive pastors. The joyful, world-changing vision that Mary announces will only come to pass because God is faithful. All of the cleverness or energy or skill that we have will only be worth anything if we use it to point to the way that God continues to be faithful from one generation to another. Despite all the darkness around us, this is a day for Mary's mega joy. Not only because we are ordaining a great priest for Christ's church, but because every time a group of disciples gather together to celebrate the sacraments, no matter how grand or how humble it may be, we are doing nothing less than joining Jesus in defying the powers of darkness and death with resurrection joy. So Cody, saturate yourself with God's power and love every single day that you are given to exercise this vocation so that your whole life might sing out with Mary's mega joy because God has remembered his promise of mercy in every generation. Amen. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For our us and our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary, and it was made him. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in the accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven 
and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism of the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. My brother, the church is the family of God the body of Christ, and the temple of the Holy Spirit. All baptized people are called to make Christ known as Savior and Lord and to share in the renewing of His world. Now you are called to work as pastor, priest, and teacher, together with your bishop and fellow presbyters, and to take your share in the councils of the church. As a priest, it will be your task to proclaim by word and deed the gospel of Jesus Christ and to fashion your life in accordance with its precepts. You are to love and serve the people among whom you work, caring alike for young and old, strong and weak, rich and poor. You are to preach, to declare God's forgiveness to penitent sinners, to pronounce God's blessing, to share in the administration of holy baptism and in the celebration of the mysteries of Christ's body and blood, and to perform the other ministrations entrusted to you. In all that you do, you are to nourish Christ's people from the riches of his grace and strengthen them to glorify God in this life and in the life to come. My brother, do you believe that you are truly called by God and his church to this priesthood? I believe I am so called. Do you now, in the presence of the church, commit yourself to this trust and responsibility? I do. Will you respect and be guided by the pastoral direction and leadership of your bishop? I will. Will you be diligent in the reading and study of the Holy Scriptures? and in seeking the knowledge of such things as may make you a strong and more able minister of Christ. I will. Will you endeavor so to minister the word of God and the sacraments of the new covenant that the reconciling love of Christ may be known and received? I will. Will you undertake to be a faithful pastor to all whom you are called to serve, laboring together with them and with your fellow ministers to build up the family of God. I will. Will you do your best to pattern your life and that of your family and community in accordance with the teachings of Christ so that you may be a wholesome example to your people? I will. Will you persevere in prayer, both in public and in private, asking God's grace both for yourself and for others, offering all your labors to God through the mediation of Jesus Christ and in the sanctification of the Holy Spirit. I will. May the Lord, who has given you the will to do these things, give you the grace and power to perform them. Amen. Amen. Spiritus, Veni Sancte 
calling us to be a holy people in the kingdom of your Son, Jesus our Lord, who is the image of your eternal and invisible glory, the firstborn among many brethren, and the head of the church. We thank you that by his death he has overcome death, and having ascended into heaven, has poured his gifts abundantly upon your people, making some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers to equip the saints for the work of ministry and the building up of his body. Therefore, Father, hear it to Cody. Fill him with grace and power and make him a priest in your church. May he exalt you, O Lord, in the midst of your people, 
offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to you, boldly proclaim the gospel of salvation, and rightfully administer the sacraments of the new covenant. Make him a faithful pastor, a patient teacher, and a wise counselor. Grant that in all things he may serve without reproach, so that your people may be strengthened and your name glorified in all the world. All this we ask through Jesus Christ our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Cody, receive this Bible as a sign of the authority given to you to preach the Word of God and to administer His holy sacraments. Do not forget the trust committed to you as a priest of Christ Church. Dear friends, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Congregation here at St. Andrews knows that whenever I say just a couple of announcements that that's a bald-faced lie uh, and that there are more than just a couple. But I think uh, there are just a couple today. Um, one is thank you to you all who are here in person uh, and to you all who have joined through the live stream uh, both here in the United States and the United Kingdom and Ireland, folks from every uh, Christian tradition. It is a joy and uh, an honor for you to be here on this day uh, to support not just me but the whole Church of God. Uh, if you are in the Black Hills area and would like to receive communion, we're going to uh, try to do uh, the distribution of communion uh, in the church parking lot with uh, safety, dis distancing, and masks, and things like that. Um, so if you are close enough to Rapid City, 
uh, to join us from 1.30 to 2 or so in the parking lot at St. Andrews. Uh, we would love to see you here. If you're farther than that, and we will meet one another in the Eucharist. And a thank you also to, see I told you it wasn't just a couple, thank you to Bishop Foltz uh, for your willingness to step in and uh, ordain me on behalf of Minnesota and put up with multiple uh, revisions in the bulletin, uh, so thank you. Father Cody, and it is so good to be able to call him Father Cody, finally. That's right. Today is a great day for St. Andrew's Episcopal Church here in Rapid City. It is a great day for the Episcopal Diocese of South Dakota. It is a good day for the church. And I want to extend my gratitude to Bishop Loya for his permission to be able to ordain you a priest in Christ, one holy Catholic and apostolic church on his behalf and on behalf of the Minnesota. I want to thank him very much for his extraordinarily fine sermon that he delivered to us today. And I share with both Bishop Loya and, and Father Cody um, uh, the feelings that we all have that we would very much have liked to have been able to gather uh, as a congregation and, and to celebrate much differently than we are doing today. That being said, uh, I dare say that this is not going to be the first challenge that you or your congregation is ever going to have to face during your ministry. And you are approaching this challenge, you and your congregation both, with great creativity and great energy. Uh, and I'm grateful uh, to all of you. There is one announcement that, that I do need to make, um, and I'm, I'm glad to have this opportunity not only to, to, to share this with the congregation of St. Andrews, but with everyone who is watching. Normally there is an offering, offering that is taken up at ordinations, and the offertory at ordinations are designated for the priest's discretionary fund. Now, for those of you who are not familiar, uh, the discretionary fund are not funds that belong to the clergy. Uh, they belong to the church, and the clergy, on behalf of the church, uses those funds uh, to meet emergency needs uh, for pastoral concerns for which no other funds are available. And so I invite you and I encourage you uh, to please drop a check into the mail to St. Andrew's Episcopal Church here in Rapid City, marked uh, for this rector's discretionary fund um, so that he may begin his ministry as a priest as well equipped as possible to meet the various challenges that come his way. Again, God's blessing be upon you, be upon this church, and be upon your ministry in the future. And proud of you. Marty. <laughs> On behalf of all of your family at St. Andrews, we wanted to be sure that you knew how much joy we feel at your ordination and with you being present with us now and for many years. So we have a daily office book for you. And Cody and I have had this joke that hypothetically, should he receive a gift, he might like to have an icon. And so thanks to Maggie and Molly who transported things from Minneapolis, here is your Emigabo icon on this feast day of Emigabo. Can you show the camera? Oh, I thought you could. Thank you, Marty. And thank you, St. Andrews. And thank you, Molly and Maggie. And thank you all. Offer to God a sacrifice of thanksgiving and make good your vows to the Most High.
Lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is truly right to glorify you, Father, and to give you thanks. For you alone are God, living and true, dwelling in light inaccessible before time and forever, fountain of life and source of all goodness. You made all things and fill them with your blessing. You created them to rejoice in the splendor of your radiance. Countless throngs of angels stand before you to serve you night and day. And beholding the glory of your presence, they offer you unceasing praise. Joining with them and giving voice to every creature under heaven, we acclaim you and glorify your name as we say, Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. We acclaim you, Holy Lord, glorious in power. Your mighty works reveal your wisdom and love. You formed us in your own image, giving the whole world into our care, so that in obedience to you, our Creator, we might rule and serve all your creatures. When our disobedience took us far from you, you did not abandon us to the power of death. In your mercy, you came to our help, so that in seeking you, we might find you. Again and again, you called us into covenant with you, and through the prophets, you taught us to hope for salvation. Father, you loved the world so much that in the fullness of time, you sent your only Son to be our Savior incarnate by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. He lived as one of us, yet without sin. To the poor he proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners freedom, to the sorrowful joy. To fulfill your purpose he gave himself up to death, and rising from the grave destroyed death and made the whole creation new, and that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose for us. He sent the Holy Spirit, his own first gift for those who believe, to complete his work in the world and to bring to fulfillment the sanctification of all. When the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, his heavenly Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. At supper with them, he took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Father, we now celebrate this memorial of our redemption, recalling Christ's death and his descent among the dead, 
proclaiming his resurrection and ascension to your right hand, awaiting his coming in glory and offering to you from the gifts you have given us this bread and this cup. We praise you and we bless you. We praise you, we bless you, we give thanks to you, and we praise you, Lord our God. Lord, we pray that in your goodness and mercy, your Holy Spirit may descend upon us and upon these gifts, sanctifying them and showing them to be holy gifts for your holy people, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that all who share this bread and cup may become one body and one spirit, a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your name. Remember, Lord, your one holy Catholic and apostolic church, redeemed by the blood of your Christ. Reveal its unity, guard its faith, and preserve it in peace. Remember Michael, our presiding bishop, Jonathan, our bishop, Justin, the Archbishop of Canterbury, Francis, the Bishop of Rome, Bartholomew, the Ecumenical Patriarch, Elizabeth, the presiding bishop of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America, and all who minister in your church. Remember the order of the visitation of Holy Mary, the order of St. Benedict, the order of Julian of Norwich, the daughters of St. Paul, and all monks, nuns, and sisters. Remember all who have died in the peace of Christ, especially Hilda, and those whose faith is known to you alone. Bring them into the place of eternal joy and light, and grant that we may find our inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, with patriarchs, matriarchs, prophets, apostles, and martyrs, with St. Benedict, St. Scholastica, St. Francis de Sales, St. Jane de Chantal, St. Hilda of Whitby, St. Columba, and all the saints who have found favor with you in ages past. We praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through Christ, and with Christ, and in Christ, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty God and Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah! Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us your peace. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Jerusalem, my happy home, when shall I come to thee? When shall my sorrows have an end? Thy joys, when shall I see? Thy saints are crowned with glory great. They see God face to face. They triumph still, they still rejoice in that most happy place. There David stands with harp in hand as master of the choir. Ten thousand times would one be blessed who might this music hear. Our Lady sings magnificent God with tunes surpassing sweet. And blessed martyr's harmony doth ring in every street.
an effective example in word, in action, in love, in patience, and in holiness of life. Grant that we, with him, may serve you now and always rejoice in your glory. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Father Cody, would you ask God's blessing upon these my people? Dear friends, the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia.